pain. And you wouldn't want that for yours. What if I say, well, there's only one, one man that I can give credit to for teaching calculus in the Louisiana system and doing a very great job, and his name is John Doe. Brother Roland will jump out of that seat. <laughs> I'm the one that teaches calculus. <laughs> yeah, but everybody can't claim that. But they can defame your name. Isn't that right? Well, the, the father, the master, he don't want his name to be defamed. He wants his people to know his name. But all these people coming up, oh, we can call him anything. He, he knows we're talking to him. Well, hold on a minute. He said, call me by my name. What else did he say in Isaiah? He said, my people will know my name. He just kept on being very repetitious from the first of the book to the end of the book. He is telling us, I want you to keep my name sacred. I don't want no other Elohim. I don't want no other gods before me. I want to be the only one that you call on. I'm jealous of y'all. I done saved y'all. I done made y'all and I want y'all for myself. Yes. You are my possession. Yes. I don't want to share you with the world. I don't want to share you with a false god. I don't want you to call me out of my name. I remember one day Brother Johnson I walked up to my mama and I said, how you doing today, Lavinia? Well, I saw them hands going to the hip like this. What did you say? I said, I just said, how you doing, Lavinia? She looked at me, she said, I'm going to let you get away with that one. But if you call me that again, you better put Mrs. on the front part of it and Williams at the end. Don't just call me Lavinia because that's disrespectful. But you can say Mrs. Lavinia Williams. And she let me go with that one. Guess what? That never came out of my mouth again. Because I knew what the ramifications of that would be. I know what five on the black hand side mean. And she didn't mind using it. But you got to respect the person's name. So if you got to respect the person's name, because I guarantee you one thing, if I walk into the White House, when I, when I go down there to Washington, if I walk in the White House and say, how you doing, Trump? They're going to put me out. Very quick. Mike, throw me in the brig, jail, whatever. You stay in there until you learn his true name. Anyway. Look what it says in Isaiah 61.3. To appoint unto those who mourn in Zion. Are you, are you, we ought to be mourning, right? Watch this. Now the Father said, let your laughter be turned to what? Well, let me help you out. Mourning. I knew somebody was reading that. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Because we don't have too much to laugh at in this world today. Hallelujah. We're getting quiet right now. Maybe y'all getting ready for what I'm getting ready to say. I'm going to say it one more time. We don't have too much to laugh at in this world today. Our tax dollars, I spoke about that this morning and I spoke about it last night. Our tax dollars are going for some things that we call horrible. But we're not doing anything to get away from taxation. Taxes are paying for abortions because they're trying to minimize the population in this country. Y'all know that? They're trying to reduce it real quick. So they're giving everybody an abortion who want one. They're giving contraceptives to everybody who want one. They're not trying to nullify the fact they shouldn't be out there fornicating. They just want you to go on and fornicate, but, but uh, don't have no babies. Uh-huh. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yep. Then they're starting to use uh, uh, aborted babies' tissues for money. Stem cells. Stem cells are very expensive business. Are y'all hearing me? See, we got to look at what's really going on. I'm, I'm in the jail system, and guess what? Our tax dollars are, buy, are buying bras and panties for men. And the pills that they take to keep the hair from growing on their face and stuff. Your tax dollars, my tax dollars is buying that. And the father said, no, no, no. I want y'all to get out of that system. But we, we kind of scared to trust him and not trust Walmart. We trust Walmart. But even Walmart showed us something when, when Katrina came through here. 
Because me, me and Brother Blackwell went in Walmart and we didn't see nothing on the shelves. Every store we went in, we couldn't even find ice. And my mother-in-law needed electricity and I had to go looking for diesel from here all the way to Baton Rouge just to get a little diesel to keep that generator running to keep, well, it wasn't diesel. I used my diesel truck. I had to get diesel in it, but I had to get gas to put in that generator to keep that machinery running to keep my mother-in-law going. I found out it's hard to live in this world without Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam is making it even harder for you to live without him. Boy, we got quiet now. Maybe I'm hitting the home. See, when you start talking about people's money, they get touchy. You can talk about everything. You can talk about their children if you want to. They don't get touchy. But start getting in their pocket. Well, we ought to start finding out. All of our money is supporting a mechanism that we don't want. The only thing keeping me giving taxes right now is what my master said, the Messiah. He said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Peter, go catch a fish. And you're going to find enough money in there to pay your taxes and mine. Help me somebody. Acts chapter 4 verse 11. Didn't we go over that? Romans 3.31. Do we make void the law? Do you substitute the law for faith? That's a question that is asked by Shaul. What do you say, brother? Father Yah forbids, we establish the law. So how can you tell people the law has been substituted by grace? Or how can you tell people the law is non-effective but faith is? When we are supposed to be establishing the law, that means building up on it. Making people know that we should not, cannot, and will not have no other gods before him. We will not bow down. We will not make images to bow down to. We won't do that. We will not take his name in vain. We will not keep Sunday over the Sabbath. We will not disrespect our parents. We will not become a bunch of liars and thieves and, and going out here committing adultery. We will not murder people. We will not covet one another's goods. We are going to serve Yah in spirit and in the truth. And people say, you cannot keep the commandments. That's not what the book said. The book says we can. He didn't tell us something to do that was impossible. First John chapter 5, verse number 3, it said, For this is the love of Almighty God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not, not burdensome, not too heavy. So what he's saying is, I didn't give you something you couldn't do. I gave you something that's easy to do if you want to do it. The only thing that's hard to do is what you don't want to do. Yeah. Sister Deborah just graduated as a teacher from, from the school system in Tangible Hill Parish. But you know what? She must have enjoyed her, her work to stay in there doing what she was doing. But see, if you're doing something and you don't enjoy doing it, it's a job. It's a tedious thing to get up every morning and go do something you don't really want to do. You're only doing it because that's the only thing you had open to you. And you like the money coming in. Other than that, you wouldn't even go to that job. But if you're doing something you like doing, you get up ready to go do it. Isn't that right? You formulate ideas of how you can do it better. You don't substitute it for something else. But if you got a job, you're looking for a sub. <laughs> I need something to take the place of this. Praise his Kodesh name. Romans 6, 15 says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Once again, the word says, Yah forbid. In other words, we're saying, don't you dare separate, su uh, um, um, substitute grace for keeping Torah. Don't dare do that. We just got in the book that I wrote, we just got out of that particular chapter that, that is called the grace card. How people use that term all the time. Oh, I'm under grace. I'm, in, I'm under grace. I'm a, I'm, well, you out there fornicating, but I'm under grace. Or, or you committed adultery, but I'm under grace. Or, or you got drunk and staying drunk, but I'm under grace. You cannot substitute grace for sin. And nor can you replace it by giving us grace instead of Torah. 
Most of the time you find out that grace is for the humble. So if you're going around here boasting about your evil self and talking about you under grace and no humility about you. And the only way you can be under grace, you got to be under the influence of Almighty, th- Almighty Yah that's on your thoughts, your feelings, and on your mind and how that reflects in your life. So if you're not reflecting Almighty Yahweh through your life, you're not under grace. If you're not influenced by him to live a righteous life, you're not under grace. According to Romans chapter 8, I'm going to tell you right now, it tells us that we should be showing forth the righteousness of the law. Why? Because we are no longer in a carnal mind. We are in a spiritual mind. When the father saw that the carnal mind was killing us, he sent them the spiritual mind that healed us. Can you hear the father right now sitting on the sideline saying, hey, hey, spiritual, come here. Go in and get Isaac off the court. He about done. He about to fall out out there. We got a substitute. So he put grace in my place and pulled me on the sideline and stuck his spirit in me. Once he stuck his spirit in me, he stuck his word in me. Once he stuck his word in me, I got power, love, and a sound mind. He said, now go back out there and get that sub out of there. Grace is still good, but it's only a substitute for a time. His influence is supposed to bring you closer and closer to him. But it also gives you enough time to get your bad stuff right. Come on, y'all. Somebody ought to be glad that grace came into this picture. Because the wages of sin is death. But grace is a momentous point. That's keeping death off of you for a little while so you can get your business right. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, if you just want to go to hell, you pass by his influence and let the world influence you. You make your own choices. You can go to church all your life and go to hell. Hell waiting for you, baby. Because you got the wrong mind. Don't y'all hear what I said in the beginning of this message that wasn't even written down as a part of my message? You sit in here as his people. You look like his people. You sit and hear the word like his people. But you will not do what his people are supposed to do. That's a bad commentary right there. He done called us out of darkness into the marvelous light and we still want to do what we want to do. That's not going to work with him. Do you know Paul came back and told them, it's in the next verse, verse 16. No, don't you know that to whom you yield yourself service to obey, that's who you serve. Yeah. Whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. All he wants for us to do is to substitute our rebellious nature for an obedient nature. And he got that one sitting on the sideline waiting for you to want it. Do you want that? Do you want to obey him? Then you need that nature of obedience to be in you to replace that rebellious nature and get it out. It's messing up the game. Because when he says shoot, you put your hands down. When he says shout, you close your mouth. When he says study, you go play. 